What's up, everybody? This is Podcast Game Overse episode 143 for Saturday, May 20, 2023. I am Wasabi Ice Cream. This is a show on the internet for internet people and non internet people. And we have an internet person with us, Rick. What's up? Yo, what up, everybody? It's Rick. I'm an internet person. And we have another special guest on the show, my baby. I'm not going to give you guys his name, but we can call him Junior for now. Say hi, Junior. Rick, Rick Junior. What's his internet name? <laughs> uh, I haven't come up with one yet. Let's call him Junior. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, um, my family gave him the nick. Well, my wife's family gave him the nickname like Big Bread, so you can call him Big Bread. Big, big bread. Yeah, there's like a whole story behind it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. call him big bread. They well, big bread. Is it a specific kind of bread? Nah, I don't no? think so. Okay. I imagine like a loaf of bread. A whole loaf. Uh, that's what I imagine. A slice loaf. Yeah, uh, okay. not sliced, like you know, pre-sliced. Pre, okay. That's what I imagine, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. I'm excited. We got a lot. Not a lot to talk about, but we played some games, man. And I think everyone yeah. knows where we're going with this. But we're gonna save that for like, you know, later. Let's start with uh, we're always starting with what you've been playing. Um I haven't really talked about Redfall at all. But I feel like I feel like I played more Redfall than most other people on the internet. So I'm going to yeah. talk about that. All right, let's hear it. And my thing about Redfall is that it's a bad it's a bad game. I don't think I'm breaking yes. any ground saying that. Uh, yes. It is a so bad game. So brave. But the, <laughs> I there's just there's there's things in that game. There's like hints of greatness in that game i feel like they could just tweak a little bit of settings and they would have something much more enjoyable it's just so disappointing because when you hear like arcane you think like dishonor you think like prey and i was expecting that but like with multiplayer and that's seems like that's not what we got really yeah but not only that, but you, you think those games, and then what you, what you actually get is like Borderlands and like Far Cry, Far Cry. Yeah. which when they said that, I got excited. I was like, oh shit, Far Cry. Yeah, man, that fucking sounds awesome. Dude, that sounds awesome. A Far Cry like made by Arcane with multiplayer. Yeah, sign me up. That sounds dope. And then you load it up and it's like, dude, this world is empty. So you don't get your Far Cry because there's just nothing in the fucking world. Yeah. And then you don't get your Borderlands because there's just nothing to loot. So yeah. you just, you don't get like the the two things that those games do the best. You, this game just doesn't yeah. do at all, uh, which is a huge bummer. It's like a huge bummer. Yeah. They give you all this stuff to explore, but they don't put anything in it. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the point? What's the point? So that would be my main thing is like, just put shit in the world. And I think you would solve 80% of this game's problems. And then the other problem is the enemies are just fucking brain dead, man. Brain dead enemies. The AI is like, dead, like dog shit. Dog right? shit. <laughs> dog shit dude so like once you set up once you find a like a safe house you you like you set it up with a bunch of like ultraviolet lights and just like basic defenses just outside of the safe house when you fast travel to the safe house you start inside of a bunch of like uv lights and shit and then um shit just respawns in the area just randomly just right next to the safe house so when you fast travel there there's like two or three vampires just there for whatever reason on your around your safe house it's supposed to be safe and they'll just run into the ultraviolet light 
and when what happens is when a when a vampire hits ultraviolet light in this game, they just turn to stone, and then you can just break them with a melee attack. And it'll just walk right the fuck into the light. They'll just walk right the fuck oh into it. God. So you fast travel there. They see you. They run straight at you. And then into the ultraviolet light. And you just fucking... They stone up and you just break them. And it's like, you guys can't be more fucking brain dead than you are. Like, it's some of the most insane shit I've ever seen. And it's that... And then once you are out in the field, it's just that still. Like, they'll run straight at you. They just run straight at you. It's like, guys, like, use your fucking vampires. You can, like, fly or turn into, like, a, a swarm of bats or something. Uh, you know? Or, like, use the shadows to your advantage. Um, that's yeah. if you don't even catch them. That's if you don't catch them, like, T-posing or, um... Uh, a bunch of them that I found, they were just, like, invis invisible. Or they weren't invisible. They were visible, but... They had no data associated with them, so they would just be in the area. You could see them, but you couldn't interact with them at all, and they would never acknowledge you. It was like the weirdest shit. I've I saw at least like three of them. That's obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so annoying. I'm so disappointed. I wanted to play this game so bad, and yeah. it came out like right when I was moving, so I didn't have a chance to download it. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, I was excited to finally check it out, and then what a disappointment it was, man. Yeah, dude. But you remember we we called it <laughs> like we have it like we have an episode called um like I think one of our podcast episodes I called Redfall looks like garbage or something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> like months ago, and then yeah, we called it. Yeah, but... before like we we were already super critical of it when the trail when the first like trailer dropped. And we were like, okay, we eased up a little bit when they announced, like, oh, it's not like a Left 4 Dead, like it's like a Far Cry like. We eased up a little bit. Yeah. But they showed nothing to make us think it was going to be a good game after yeah. that. <laughs> so I, I, actually, I actually ended up playing a bunch of this game only because it was so brain dead that I could just, I could just load up like videos. And because what I, I, I notice this when I play games is that I, I tend to put a lot of time into games that I don't have to pay a, a lot of attention to Thanks. because I can I can just load up a podcast or like load up a movie or something and yeah you can load up a podcast a movie smoke a bowl or something yeah yeah like, yeah so yeah. I end up doing that a lot this game is turns out this game is perfect for that because it is completely <laughs> fucking brain dead so I ended up playing a lot yeah, of it. a game that's great when you do something else while you're playing it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> The game's um, great if you're doing anything else other than playing the game while you're playing. Yeah. And, um... So, I feel like I played more of this game than most other people on the internet. And... Yeah. Uh, the thing that not many people are talking about is, like, it has a mission structure. You do, like, missions. And actually, some of the missions are... This is where I would praise Arcane for doing what Arcane does. Is Some of the mission structures are, like, pretty, um, pretty good. In terms of, it'll send you into an area that has um, really good level design on the interiors. That's what I've heard. I heard the level design's good. It's just like the AI's bad. Like yeah, anything outside of like traversal is apparently like even the progression I heard is like not good. <laughs> yeah. So like there were like two, maybe two. I think two, a total of two missions, where I was like, oh shit, man, this is actually is pretty the level design here is actually pretty good now the shit that they put in the level was not good in terms of like enemies and <laughs> yeah. shit but um the actual map was solid yeah yeah the map design i was like man if they had competent enemies in here this would be a lot more fun um yeah. but there was one that was like a, a a theater um and then there was like another one that was like what was it it was like a radio or like a television station or something like that yeah. and those are pretty good like those are pretty well designed maps or fun to traverse and and go through um the multifaceted in their in their design so yeah but um once you like do the missions the final the last mission was it does the anthem thing it does the anthem thing dude 
which is, what is the, anthem the, like? the, the the anthem thing is so at the end of anthem before you can do like the final final missions it has you do a bunch of fucking shitty side missions uh that says hey do these side missions and like collect all this bullshit that you collect when you do the side missions so that you can do this main mission oh that's so obnoxious yeah and this does this fucking the same thing it's like oh hey here's the here's the final mission but wait hold on before you do that do a bunch of these side missions and there's nothing special about the side missions. They're just the straight up side missions that you can do at any point throughout the game. They but force now they you gotta to do them. Do like this resource. Yeah, they just force you to do them at the end to collect this thing. That's so obnoxious. That is like, ah, did you turn the game off after that, or did I, you that's like? That's why I uninstalled it. That's why. <laughs> Curious about this game. Phil Spencer went out on like I think he went on. Oh, you're cutting in and out a little bit. Check it, yo, yo, check it, check it. Okay, you're good now. You were like fading in and out. It was like really weird. I don't know if you're talking now, but I would hear you. It's still doing it. It's still doing it. God damn. Okay. Um, yeah, like Phil Spencer went on, he he went and like did an interview and kind of funny and yeah. to like talk about the, the state of that game and he was like defending it a lot saying, yeah, well, he actually wasn't defending it. He was like, yeah, we fucked up and I'm like kind of paraphrasing here, but yeah, 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 he was basically like, we fucked up. We had much bigger plans for it. This is unacceptable. But he did say, like, how this got, yeah. he was like, we're committed to fixing it or some shit like that. And when I hear that, I'm like, there's no, you should just, this is not, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, Chief. Like, I, I feel like this is, uh, I don't know, during the entire time I played that game, there were no updates, there were no patches, no nothing. And the game, like, seriously needs some... Um, patching at least to fix the bugs there's a lot of fucking bugs a lot of fucking glitches and shit like at least like if they don't do like a content update at least like a bug fix update at the very least yeah. i don't know i don't know if they put anything out since because i'm done with it now but um i put more time into that game than most people did and there were no updates in the time that i had with it so but, like it's cool for us because like we don't we we played on Game Pass, so it's cool for us to like, you know, if you never fix it again, it's whatever. I didn't pay for it. Yeah. But I can't imagine like, I'm sure there's a there's more than one person out there who paid seventy dollars for this game, and those are the people I feel bad for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you get it on Steam, they they got the refund policy. I think this was they gave a. I think this is one of the games they did an, an exception for. Like if you went over the time limit, they were like, "Yeah, we'll 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 give you a refund." Fuck it. So well, that's good. I'm glad they did that at least. Yeah. And that's such a huge bummer, man. Like <laughs> this game could have been good, and I'm sad. Like it's it's really shitty. Yeah, um, there's just there's hints of there's glimpses of hope in this game where you're like, ah, oh, they just made the enemies a lot more aggressive it made you know add like a thousand more enemies in the world uh yeah they just litter the world with enemy i think with like they just overcorrect it's just litter the world just make it rotten with motherfuckers just put them every fucking where like like a left for dead almost like it, it should be more left for dead like in that way where it's just motherfuckers just everywhere and then just make them a little bit more brain dead, maybe. Like make them more brain dead, and then just add thousands of more of them. And then that would, I think, make it a bit more interesting. The other problem is you can only carry two weapons at a time, and some of the weapons what? are some of the some of the weapons are very situational. Like there's a spike, there's a spike launcher that just does massive damage to vampires, and but you never want to carry it because 
it has such limited ammo. It takes so long to reload. And, takes up a whole ass weapon slot. And a whole ass like, weapon slot. And you can only carry two of them. Or I think you can carry three. But it's still, it's still not enough to even consider carrying that fucking thing. Because yeah. there's so much more better options for weapons. Like, there's, like, very situational weapons for... There's the, the spike launcher. There's a UV. There's an ultraviolet gun. Uh, there's a flame, uh, like a was- flare gun. And it's like, you never want to carry any of these. All, all you want is like a shotgun, an assault rifle, and a pistol. And maybe like a sniper rifle. For You can swap them out at any time. Like, you can carry multiple guns, but you only have three slots. But you don't want to, like, you have to go into the menu. And the game doesn't pause, by the way. The game is always online, even though they you can play it single player. It's always online. Uh. And does a Dark Souls thing of it doesn't pause at ever. So when you, go, when you go into the menus, if you did want to swap out your weapons, because you can do that, but it doesn't pause, so we'll get fucked up if you did that. Yeah, it's gonna be a deal breaker for me. <laughs> I got a baby; I can't afford it to pause. <laughs> yeah, so it's like that kind of shit. Um, yeah, so it's you know. I, I'm curious to see if they continue working on this. I do. I would like to see where it goes. I'm optimistic. Like I feel like it can be salvaged, but I think they've lost. They've already lost a lot of people. I mean, I don't know if this is gonna have the same comeback story as a as a No Man's Sky or a, <laughs> a Realm Reborn or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. I feel like they could do it though. My mic is like it's fucking up. Not fucking up, but it's like what is happening? I've been fucking with this for the past My shit's fucking up too. Like my Discord keeps freezing. Oh wow. But um yeah, that's Redfall. I don't really have much more to say other than that, but Yeah. I put a lot of time into it, so I feel like I feel like a lot of people just a lot of people wanting internet just like loaded it up just to kind of meme on it, but it does have some redeeming qualities. So, is uh, I don't think it's as hopeless as most of the internet. I'm sure it could get turned around, but at this point, like, would they we even want to? Like, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. I hope it gets turned around because Arcane makes some good shit. So I don't want this to be like. A total black mark on their record. Um, that's a huge bummer. But uh, yeah, that's Redfall. Um, do we want to talk about Zelda now, or is that? Um, I got a couple things to talk about first. So I want Zelda to be the last game we talk about because this is, I think that's gonna take up most of our time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um <coughs> I'm playing a couple games right now. I bought a South Park Fractured Butthole on my Switch. Just because, like, I thought it'd be cool to have it on Switch. It was on sale for, like, $10 for, like, the Gold Edition. I played it before, but I didn't have any expanded content, so I this would be cool. Uh, don't get it on Switch. <laughs> <laughs> the game runs fine, but it's got these fucking terrible, terrible load times. I don't know what's taking it so long to load, but it takes forever Anytime you hit a loading screen, it takes at least like a minute. It's fucking frustrating. And that game needs to load like everything. Combat encounters and you move from one screen to the next. It's got a loading screen. It's fucking obnoxious. It's not totally game breaking. But my God, it is like it's it's abhorrent how bad these these load times are. Um, It's still a fun game. It's a fun, funny ass RPG. But get it on literally anything else if you can. Um, and for my Xbox, I bought Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry Five, which I played before on PS4, but I have an Xbox Series X now. So I'm like, oh, it's like on sale for like fifteen dollars, the special edition, so I can get all the main content and the extra special edition content, and I can play it on my Xbox Series X and compare like how it runs on PS4. 
my god, this game is still fucking incredible. It runs super well on Xbox. It looks great. Uh, the special edition content with the extra character is like great. The game's just really fun. I forgot how fun a game Devil May Cry 5 is. It's seriously like one of the best action games I've ever played, like ever. I've I've had that um, game for a while and still haven't loaded it up. It's fucking incredible, dude. Like it's it is like peak Devil May Cry. This is coming from someone who like loves those character action games and other Cry, Bayonetta. I love those games. And this game is just like peak that. It's got so much combat options, so many uh character options. There's like with the special editions, there's four playable characters. And they all play very different. And even the characters that are returning, like Dante and Nero, have so many changes to their fundam to their uh, to their move set while while not like, totally eliminating the core of what made them so great. It's just a perfect refinement of the past, like what, like twenty years of Devil May Cry. So, yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Pick up Devil May Cry Five if you're even like remotely interested in action games this game is like probably the best out there and the special edition content with with virgil is great too virgil's such a fun character to play as he had a huge glow up in the last couple games and he plays really tight i'm just i'm having a blast with it dude i still play it sometimes uh between like bouts of tears of the kingdom if i want to get like a, a couple uh get that adrenaline pump in I'll run Devil May Cry. The next thing I know, it's been a couple hours that I've been playing it. It's fucking great. <laughs> um, it's a phenomenal fucking game. It's so much fun. And it's not easy. It's not hard. It's not, it's not, it's not easy, but it's not like really hard either. It's going to ask a lot of you when you play it. Um, but I recommend like, don't play it on easy. Play it on like Devil Hunter. I think it's a normal difficulty. Don't switch to easy. Try to avoid using items if you can. Just because the game does such a good job of like teaching you how to play through gameplay that you as a player start to level up alongside your character. And it's not like it's not like Dark Souls where you can go into all these combat scenarios with like a bunch of different options. Like, you know, it's your character versus this boss. So you'll learn how to beat them if you just if you're patient with it. If you don't mind, like, learning from, learning learning through death, like, you will get a hang of this game. Um, but yeah, it's a fucking blast, dude. I love it. Um, let's move on to <laughs> the main course now. Let's get these appetizers out of the way. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom is fucking incredible, dude. It's incredible. Like... Oh my god, I don't know where to start with this game, man. <laughs> like, I, I don't know where to start with this. It's just... The game gives you so many options to play it how you want to play it. And the world is so large and expansive. Um, how much are we going to talk about the game here? Because I don't want to spoil, like, too much of it. Uh, I mean, I wasn't... We don't really need to talk about any of the story stuff. Even I've done very little of that in my like I don't know twenty hours. Have you? Uh, I've only like gone to just the yet. The what? Oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. The depths? No, yeah, 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 yeah. That blew my mind because I don't remember seeing that in the trailers and stuff. If they talked about, it, I don't remember talking about it. Yeah, but there's a whole other fucking world down there, dude. Yeah, there's basically three maps. There's the yes. normal map, and then there's a sky map. But then also, there's the entire fucking underground map. Yeah, that I don't, I don't remember them talking about it at all in like trailers and other gameplay previews. I don't, at least I don't remember it. Yeah, did the first? So there's there's a point where you go in there as part of like one of the first main. It's like a branch off the like one of the fir very first main quests. Yeah, where you go down there. But I went down there before that. I went down there. Uh, like I think I went like south first. Yeah, like, when I so first got I. to Hyrule, I went like south, and it was I saw a dragon dive into one of these fucking holes, and I was like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> so when I got like when I got high enough, 
when I finally got the paraglider, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into whatever the fuck that thing just went into just to see if you could. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, Dude, shit. I had, I had walked by a couple chasms to the depths, and I didn't have the paraglider yet. And I thought, oh, these are probably, like, little, like, side things. I'd seen a couple of them while I was exploring. And my brain was like, oh, these are probably, like, little side dungeons, like, like shrines is what I thought. But no, these are entrances to, like, an entire fucking map. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's incredible. Like, it's so expansive. There are some enemies down there and some items, materials that are exclusive to that, like, area. <laughs> Yeah, it was like it's very scary. It's a very scary area because there's very little light, and all the enemies. If they hit you, they do. Um, what's it? What's it called? Like um, gloom damage. Gloom damage. Which, yeah, which permanently wipes out that that uh that health that heart container. Yeah. Until you could like find a light source, which are like there's these there's these roots underground that they're basically like the towers. So you find these roots, it maps out that chunk of the area and removes any gloom you have. Yeah. And there are some items that can remove the gloom too, but they're kind of hard to find. And yeah. Okay. It's well, very taxing exploring the depths. Let's like, back. Let's back up a little. Yeah, bit. Back let's track. back up. There's a lot because to talk about. So I don't know where to start, dude. Like, I'll, I'll start with this. And there's no load screen either. Like you, oh, you, yeah, you fucking yeah. hop into this hole. There's no load screen on your way down to this whole other fucking map. Yeah. It's just there. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck it works, dude. You could, there's a whole, there's three maps. Okay, there's the Sky Islands, the main Hyrule map, and the Depths. And you could, like, jump from a Sky Island down to the normal map through the Depths. And there's no load screen the whole time. And I'm like, how the fuck is this working? Like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> So this game the, is a technical marvel, man. Like, Jesus. The, the, one of the first things I'll say about this game is that it's obviously, it's straight up, it's a straight up sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And basically, almost every way you can imagine. Like, it's, I, all, it's, I, it, it, they could almost have done this as a DLC. Like, they, I could have seen this as a massive expansion to Breath of the Wild, almost. Just because Almost, it's but there's, so, there's so much to it. It's yeah, but it's so similar in almost every way. It's like, hey, we're gonna give you Breath of the Wild, but it's oh I'm I'm considering whether or not it's like a negative how similar it is for me. Because it's, I would say it's a positive because it's similar enough that it kind of catches you off guard because a lot of stuff doesn't come back from the original game. Like you get a whole new array of equipment. Like, I, I don't know if you can find them again, but I don't have, like, stasis anymore. I don't have magnesis anymore. I don't have bombs anymore. Um, well, there's new systems all those stuff, kind of no, those stuff is All that stuff is kind of still there. Kind of. Like, stasis is, like, kind of the rewind thing, but not really. And Not you know, really. You can't, like, freeze anything and, like, smack it and, like, send it flying. Like, yeah. And then, and then magnesis is... I mean that's basically just the ultra hand ability. Yeah. Um like and then the bombs, you just you can get bomb flowers and those yeah. just bombs. Uh so they've kind of there are like alternatives for most of that stuff and like expand it out. So but oh my god, dude, like there's there's so much here like yeah. When I first played it, when I was first on the Sky Island, you start off in a Sky Island, and that's like a tutorial island. And when I was first playing it, I thought the same thing. I was like, this could have been an expansion to Breath of the Wild. And then when I hopped off the island and, like, dived to the world below, I was like, oh, my God. There's And I noticed there's no load screen hopping there. I was like, has that world just been running in the background the whole time? Like, yeah, but I... I this is the first game I played where I legitimately felt like a small piece and like a living, breathing world. Well, since Breath, the yeah. first Breath of the Wild, but this is like on another look of scale because of the other maps of the game. Yeah. And it's, the oh other thing, the other thing I noticed right out the gate was that it is a much more difficult game than Breath of the Wild oh, was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like significantly more that if you're not using everything at your disposal, you're going to get fucked up. Yeah, you're just the game get... asks a lot of people. It asks you to get creative. Yeah. 
Like that was one of the very first things I noticed was this is fucking difficult. Uh, so until I started like thinking outside the box and just using everything I had, uh, yeah. which you get a lot of stuff. I think that's why I'm okay with the weapons breaking still yeah, now I am. is because now I'm just, I'm looking at everything as like, okay, what can I just put on this and throw to just fucking just fuck shit up? And that's like more now i'm just looking at everything like it is just disposable now i'm just like yeah same. yeah i'm just gonna put a bomb on on the end of the spear and just chuck it yeah. uh <laughs> or yeah so i've been using a lot of bombs a lot of fire a lot of ice just a lot of like elemental shit um yeah uh or just attaching like i'll attach um the uh the octo rocks dropped the, this balloon shit and you can just attach the balloon to uh, like arrows and hit them with it and then they'll go floating off and then I've been making a lot of fans and I've just been blowing motherfuckers off of cliffs um, just like thinking outside the box anytime they, any enemy touches a pool of water they just die like nothing can swim so I've just been using a lot of water tricks is getting enemies in the water uh like stuff like that to just would you consider tears of the kingdom like an immersive sim like, uh, like yeah or like prey because it, it lets you literally tackle any, oh my, so any way you I was, want i was thinking about the immersive sim label when it comes to other games because yeah. that's a term that people just reserve for like the most like uh basic like it, it, like three games that come to mind it's like deus ex system shock and uh like prey or like the ones yeah. that always come up when people say immersive sim or like dishonor like definitely the arcane stuff it came up when i was yeah. like thinking about redfall i was like what what is an immersive sim really because no one ever talks about like the skyrims no one ever talks about yeah like breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom but these are definitely games that are absolutely that, right? Yeah, or at least if, you, if you're if you an immersive sim fan, you'll get some fun out of this. Like, yeah. it'll check a lot of the same boxes immersive sims do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, like, the options the game gives you. And you can... A fusion mechanic lets you fuse anything to anything, like you said. You could, like, strap a bomb to a spear and then chuck it and do massive damage. Um... The the skeleton buck goblins they 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 their weapons are like their arms, and their arms do a fuck ton of damage, but they break super easy. So you can strap two arms together, chuck it, and you could do massive damage like a single point. Yeah, like it's, and then you see you can create it so you can blow motherfuckers off of cliffs. Like it's incredible, dude. The way these mechanics work together, it's it's the first game on steroids. The way these mechanics work together. And you can do some just outrageous shit in this game and solve puzzles in the most creative ways. Um, I saw a dude strap a minecart to a shield and then use like a skateboard and you can grind on rails with it. I'm I've been like, trying oh to God. figure out how to do the uh, shield surf thing because I don't know what the fuck. That's one of the, okay, one of my main gripes about this game. Right. It doesn't teach you a lot of stuff, like the finer, no. like. Well, shit. it teaches you stuff, but it's the it's the controls, man. The uh, like fumbling with the control. It, it there's so much you can do that you fumble with the you yeah. fumble with the controls a lot. I don't know if it's I don't think it's just me, but there's I a lot thing. of. I, I've called my horse by accident so many times, just because like yeah, there's so much to do, and like it's assigned like a specific button, and like. If you're not, you to, not only do you have to remember what, what each button does, you also like what combination of buttons I like, do things. Yeah, uh, get. there's like a bunch of function. It's like a keyboard with all function keys where you're like, you got to hold this and then hit this to do this. I like to throw an item. It took me so fucking long to figure out how to yeah, throw an item. I was like, I know you can do this, but how the fuck do you do it? It's like you got to hold the throw button and then he's like, he readies his weapon to throw. So you're like, oh no, that's not what I want to do. But no, you have to do you that. Hold up on the D yeah, and yeah. then hold the D. I'm like, you this is. You got to hold it. You can't let go of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Both of them. And then use your right stick to select the item. Yeah. And then you let go of the D pad. 
It's like that. And then whenever something breaks, I think it's frustrating to then like fumble around to like select another item. I, I, I wish yeah. that it was just auto select your next item. Like you can just set I, like a queue of items and it would just auto select whenever something broke. Um, to an extent, because I don't want to like, <clears throat> I don't want to like pull out my bomb item by accident and blow myself up after. <laughs> so i'm kind of okay yeah. with them like but you can you know you can sort the inventory so i like i wish i could like preset everything in the order i wanted yeah. and then it would just you know automatically switch through um how did you solve the in the tutorial islands how did you solve the 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 third shrine the snow one how did you get up there my dude Tony asked me this, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess you could have done this in different ways. I remember I got up there. It was a snowy um, one. I, I kind of fucked that up a little bit because I went exploring a little farther away, and I was like, I can't get back here. So I had to, like, reset. Uh -oh. Not reset, but I had to, like, teleport to another shrine and, like, work my way back there through. But I remember just, like, getting a bunch of, like, hot food, like, cooking a lot of hot food and just, like, climbing the... I mean the mountain, um, but there's like a bunch that you could fuck with. There's like these like platforms that are floating. You could like manipulate to get around. And I'm trying to remember like how I did it because the first time I did it, I took uh, a less obvious path and like got myself stuck. So I had to like start over, but <laughs> not start over. Like I didn't soft lock myself. Like I could I teleported to another shrine. But I had to work my way back from that shrine, like back to the mountain. So. But that was my fault. I was exploring before I had all my abilities. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did. It's like, there's it's like, a lot it's like, a, it's like a wall of ice. I, I think there's like a one way, main way they want you to do it. But um, from what I understand, I guess you go, through the, you go through those mines, right? Like you go, there's a cave you go through and you come out and there's a wall of ice with a shrine on top. So you can't really you can't climb it normally what you have to do what you have to do is like you have to like cut the trees down and then make like a bridge out of um logs basically and then like wedge the log up on the mountain so you can climb the log because the walls of the mountain are all made of ice so you can't climb the walls directly you have to put like a log in there and then climb that log and then jump off to the top i don't think i did that i think there was like another path i had to take yeah and I just went up another like mountain trail. I didn't even think to do that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was yeah, they kind of like they showed you that that's what you're supposed to do a little bit. They like give you a little spot to wedge it. But my, my this dude... game got some creative puzzles, man. Like there's uh, have you done the uh, the wind shrine yet? Or the wind uh, dungeon yet? Um, in the 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 Rito yeah no i've 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 meandered over there but i've not done like well, that's what i was looking for it was like the dungeons it's and shit it's incredible it's incredible okay there's a whole like fucking how can i word it there's a whole like there's all it's almost like an obstacle course to like get there like going through the sky lens with it. this really cool mechanic i don't want to spoil and i did it early by accident because it was so cool to, like explore and then i was like oh i need like a special thing to get in here and after i went and did the the rito mission i got what i needed i'm not gonna spoil but dude that that dungeon like holy shit it feels like this is as close to a proper zelda dungeon i think we're gonna get in these games really but it's, it's a huge step up a huge step up from like what we had before um i still miss the very like decorated dungeons that we got back in uh in um you know the previous all the games but there's a mechanic i'm not going to spoil for you that if it, if the rest of them just follow the same formula there's like an ability you get that's like specific to that dungeon that you use to go through it and then you'll you'll have it after you're done okay like, i don't want to spoil it i don't want to spoil anything but well, because on my yeah. on my like powers wheel, there's only one more slot. There's another thing you get. I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay. But um, yeah. Uh, that was. I was also. I was disappointed by the shrines, man. 
when I when I when I I started knocking out some of the shrines and then when you get to like hey this is a combat shrine I'm like you guys you guys this was this was one of the main gripes about Breath of the Wild were all these combat shrines dude and I get most of them I ran into were like tutorials but even that's like you don't I don't need a tutorial to say hey shoot them in the eye with an arrow it does massive damage like I don't think I need that there's this cool one I got into so I, I fought, I've done a couple like standard combat shrines are just like oh it drops you when they fight these guys but there's this one I did that I hope that they do more of where they take away all my weapons yeah so I use the weapons and equipment in the shrine yeah and that was cool to me I don't know, man. I, I, it's, it takes away from the real good puzzle shrines. And some of them are really good. Like, some of them are involved, you well, all of them involve, like, building shit to solve the puzzles that are in it. There was one that you had to, like, build, like, a baseball bat, and, uh, and a ball comes down. You have to knock the ball into, like, a target by, like, building, like, a bat. Uh, and I was like, this is unique. This is cool. Uh, like more, like there's stuff like that in there where I'm like, yeah, just make me like build a contraption that makes me solve some of these puzzles or all the puzzles. There's one that was really cool. It was like, a, it was a shrine. It was one of those shrines where like the getting into the shrine is the puzzle, right? Like. Yeah. Like, uh, like, like, once you get into the shrine, like, you get your, your thing, but it's getting into it, that's the puzzle part. And there's this one that was really cool, it was like a cave. And there's this icy water, so if you step in the water, you die. And it's like, oh, get the crystal, it's in the water. <laughs> and it's a cave, so I, I couldn't just, like, leave and then bring stuff back in, like, it's a whole, like, trek. I could ascend out of it, like, whenever I want to, yeah. but getting back in is kind of a pain. So like, okay, what do I have to do here? Like there's, there's, and it's, I was like, okay, I, everything that's in this cave will help me get this crystal. So I had to like think outside the box, like what can I use here to get to this crystal? And the game gave me wings. I don't want to spoil the solution, but here's, here's how I came to it. So you can like understand like how great these puzzles are. Here's how I came to it. So like the game gave me wings and there's a chest that had wings in it. And I was like, okay, I, the, do the wings float in the, in the lake? They do not, they don't float. So I'm like, fuck, so what do I do? I'm like, all I got is these these wings and there's some like, there's some 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 sh cold shrooms, but that's not gonna help me. And there's icicles everywhere. Like, what is an icicle gonna do? And then as I shot one to try to do something with it, the icicles started floating in the water. And I was like, wait a minute. I strapped a bunch of icicles to the bottom of my wings and I made a boat. <laughs> Oh. Use that to get to the center, grab the crystal, and I was done. It was just, just that that problem solving is just so cool. The way the game just lets you solve these problems and look for solutions, it's just, it's 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 so cool, man. Like there's so much to do here. It's and it's all, in my opinion, designed very very well. Like yeah. this game is just so good. I'm very very happy with this game dude some of the some of the building stuff is i i feel like could be more it, it could have a, another additional level of complexity to it where yeah. like when you attach uh power components to your to whatever you build there's like batteries you can put on your shit and then there's like um you know like engines basically or like you know when you attach like the fans and shit yeah. uh everything's either on or off there's no like hey i want to turn on the front fans or i want to turn on the back if you like swap them there, there's there's things you can build that like give you a little bit more control as to what things are activated but yeah, for the most part it's like either all on or all off there's like no yeah yeah, yeah. And it's like, man, we just want more control over, because there was one like, uh, those like floating platforms, where you get like, um, you get like a steering wheel, right? Yeah, yeah. You get like a steering wheel, and you can put those on the floating platforms, and you can actually control them a little, a little bit. But then, if you put like fans on them, you can control which fans are blowing with that steering wheel. 
Um, so then you can actually drive those shits around. Is that what that's for? Because, like, I found yeah. some steering wheels, and I'm like, I couldn't figure out what they were used for. Yeah, but yeah. To be fair, like, I tried to play with it, then an enemy knocked me off the sky, like, where I found it. I didn't feel like coming back up. <laughs> yeah, you can put those um, on on top of whatever it is you want to control. And then you can actually, you know, you can go forward and back, and you can, like, steer shit. If you put, like, wheels on it, you can, like, do the wheels. Or if you put fans on it, you can control which fans are blowing, kind of. I didn't have enough fans to uh, put because it uses so much power, and I didn't have enough power to really, like, really use them long term. But yeah, you can like just straight up steer shit with that. But even that, it's like still just like on or off, so all your power gets drained as soon as you like jump into it. There's no like, you know, um, up or down yeah. control. Like, it's very rudimentary. Yeah. And, you know, after playing a lot of, like, if you play a lot of Minecraft or Gary's Mod, like, Minecraft has, like, the redstone shit, so you can do all this, like, crazy circuitry type shit, and I don't think there's any analog for that in Tears of the Kingdom, which I'm sure they'll... No, there isn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they'll put out, like, an expansion update that adds... It's really well. Yeah. But... I can see why they didn't do it, though. They probably didn't want to overcomplicate it. Because the 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 the, um, the contraptions you can put together, they're meant to be like one use to solve a problem, and then you like yeah. get stuff. Yeah. That's what they're meant for. You're not meant to build like a flying machine. You'll just carry through the whole game, like. Yeah, I mean they limit it but, pretty much with how much power you have. Yeah. Like, but you can even expand that. Like, you can upgrade that power. Like. Yeah, but early it's on, it's not early on you don't really you can't really yeah literally you can do it sorry um but yeah, yeah dude there's so much to it like i said we could, i could spend all day talking about this there's just so much in the game that you can do and uh the fuse power too is like another thing because it makes every weapon like useful like that's why I love, like you said, I love the the durability mechanic now because it forces me to like think outside the box and like create stuff and play with these fusion combinations and see how these things work together. Yeah. Um, and it's just incredible, man. Some of the stuff, it's almost like Diablo, I think. Some stuff comes like with enchantments on them. Yeah. Have you seen that? I don't even know what determines that, but some shit will be like, hey, this one's the extra. The weapon-specific will have an enchantment. So, like, uh, the royal weapons will always have, like, um, lower stamina use for charge attacks. The the Rito blades will always have, like, a wind gust effect. Like, it's the, the type of weapon that's the enchantment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I ran into, like, a Bokoblin. Yeah, a Bokoblin had, like, a dagger... That was like a wind dagger, so we would swing it, yeah. and it would blow you away. And I was like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> like, I was yeah, pissing so me off. I was like, "Yeah, this he game... fucked with me too." <laughs> yeah. And it's a real dagger, and the best part is, you can strap whatever you want to that. Yeah. You still have that wind effect. So if you have that wind dagger, you can strap like an ice, uh, like a a, a, liz a lizard like tail to it, or a lizard horn to it to ca the cause ice. And you can freeze them while you're like blowing them away. It's like really cool. Um, I put a spring on a shield, and I perfect parried like a, a big like bokoblin. What do they call it? The big like orc looking ones, you know? Yeah. And I parry. I perfect parried them, and not only did it like throw them off guard, but the spring like knocked them backwards and knocked them over. Like <laughs> you could do some like crazy shit in this game, and it's it's so yeah. much fun to play with. Like. God, and that's the like, thing you like. Right now, I'm just like, I just want to go back into it. <laughs> you have like the game is scary as fuck, man. Because you'll see shit. Yeah. Like you'll see one of those like uh, bokoblin camps. There'd be like three of them just on the little like thing, and you walk up to it, and then a rock monster pops out, and it turns out that, like their whole camp is like on the back of oh, a yeah, rock I monster. And I'm like, I oh my that, god. And yeah. you're like you run towards it and then the rock monster pops out and you're like nope 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 <laughs> like i found that what i found out is um because a rock monster's weak point is like an ore deposit yeah yeah 
but it looks like a normal ore deposit. So I was like, okay. So I saw the book Goblin. So I'm like, okay, I'll just get like a bomb spear ready and I'll chuck it, take out the book Goblin and bust that mod, that ore deposit so I can go collect the ore when I'm done. Yeah. But no, it just pissed off the rock monster. <laughs> so I killed the book Goblin, the rock monster showed up. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, it's shit like that. And that stuff is like they put those in like the starting area. So I'm like, yeah. what the f what the fuck is this? I'm like, I'm dying yeah, over and over because there's just no they don't give you any equipment to like start with either. So you have like nothing for like a huge portion of the beginning of that game. Uh you don't get a lot of rupees to like buy shit. Uh, yeah, rupees are hard to come by. You gotta, like, like sell shit to get rupees. It's very difficult to st like starting out in this game. You just have nothing, and everything just kills you in like one or two hits. Yeah, it's very, scary, but it's 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 so fun. Like, like discovering the stuff and like you know getting past it. Like it's it's there's nothing like it, dude. There's nothing like it. Like, yeah, it's seriously like one of the most like creative fun experiences i've had playing a game in a long time and the game's fucking huge like like people talk about how big and expensive skyrim is this is like that's nothing compared to how big this world is how living breathing the world is the way things interact with each other um i've come across like the goblins fighting those like what are those, those are those robot things or sentries yeah i've come across them like fighting each other I have seen, um, I have, like, led book goblins over to those sentries to, like, start fights with them. Like, there, there's so much the way, and it's not just there's a lot to do, but also the way the world, like, it feels so alive, the way stuff interacts with each other, the way um, elements interact with enemies. You hit an enemy who's carrying a, a metal weapon, they'll drop their weapon if you shot them. Like, yeah. There's also just, like, stuff everywhere. Like, you'll just be walking on a road, and there's just there's just things to do just everywhere. They yeah. don't they don't specifically announce their, themselves, but if you like if you're on a horse or whatever, and like you'll just see something, you're like you'll get off and be like, what is that? And it's a, it's a whole thing. It turns out like I, I ran into I was just like getting lost in the mountains, and I found a Goron, and I was like, what this what's this guy doing here? And you like set up a whole thing where it's like, yeah, I'm I set up a, a strength challenge here. Like, uh, I don't know if you saw this guy, but he's, um, he I has, it's like, you know how you go to like a carnival and they have those hammer and you hit the hammer and a bell. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He set up one of those. So you have to build a contraption that hits the bell as hard as you can. And he's like, yeah, I got a bunch of junk back here. You build whatever you can and hit that bell. And then, uh, we'll see if you're the real, the strongest one here or something like that. And it's just out in a random fucking mountain somewhere. I was like, I don't even remember where the fuck it is. Cause I didn't do it right then, but I was like, it's crazy that this is just sitting here in a yeah, random dude. spot in a mountain. Like there's just shit all over the place to just find and do. Yeah, dude. It's incredible. Like it's, it's seriously like, it's everything I love about the first game, but just turned up to 11. It's yeah. I would argue it's almost like a perfect sequel. Like <laughs> There's so much, it's yeah. just more of that. It's more of what you love in the first game. It's expanded on. And, oh my God, it's, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's fantastic, dude. I, I love it. I cannot wait to see, like, what expansions this game gets, what DLC this game gets. I'm buying that shit day one. This is, I don't think it's a controversial opinion. This is the first $70 game I've, I've, I've bought, and it feels like, I, well, this is Resident Evil 4, but this, like, this is the standard. Like, every when I pay $70 for a game, this is the standard that, that's going to set for me now. Yeah, and it's surprising how polished it is, too. Yeah. Like, for as much shit as you can get into in this game, I've seen no glitches, no bugs, no nothing dude not not even like a visual Same. artifact uh it has been extremely polished there was uh, one little thing but i think like out of my hours of play there's one little thing that like that that happened to me there's this puzzle there's this bridge that was like broken i had to get this korok over to it to meet his friend 
and we're on the bottom of this bridge, right? And it's like a rope bridge, and it snapped. So I can grab the rope bridge and like pick it up, and like my I solved it by like strapping pieces of bridge to it and climbing up it and bringing the core up with me. But because it's a rope bridge, the physics still make it swing back and forth to stabilize it. And the way I stabilized it, I couldn't get off a certain section of the bridge climbing it. Mm. But all I had to do was all I had to do was jump, and like I went over that section, but I couldn't just climb up, and I had to use stamina to jump through it. But that's like the only thing I've seen that was like kind of fucky. Other than that, though, it's it's worked like perfectly. Like it's it's. I haven't gotten any shit yet that like maybe break the game. Um, and you're right. Like all we have mechanics on top of mechanics that work with each other, that work off of each other, and it's re- working relatively how it should. Like it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's insane to me that how how polished and great this game is, especially with you know the state of gaming now. How games just don't release like that now. Yeah. The the oh only God. thing one of the only things I wish is um, visually at times the game is like beautiful like the art style yeah. is incredible I just it's fucking it's a bummer that it it could look better if it was on yeah. anything but a switch yeah yeah you're right, you're right. It I looks just incredible it does but it's still a great looking game but. I'm not gonna lie. If this game was running at like 120 FPS, 4K yeah. on a PC, yeah, it would just be that much better. Mm-hmm. And, and you can you can do that on like emulate people on like Yuzu emulator. Like they've got it running at 4K 60, and it's like you look at that shit and it goes, "Oh my god, this looks incredible." Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that when people say like the Switch is an underpowered system, they're not wrong. But when games release, like how Pokemon released, where it's just it's so buggy and gross looking, and people are like, oh, yeah. it's just a Switch. No, it's just you can you can like Zelda show. You can definitely develop for the Switch and have a a really good, well running experience. But again, the caveat: it would look and run better on literally anything else. Yeah. And it's and just a huge bummer. It's, a it's huge just bummer. it's it's surprising. It does look better than. Uh, Breath of the Wild in specific yes. ways like the draw distance is noticeably better in this yeah. um, I think that's one of the main visual improvements over Breath of the Wild but the thing is that I, th- I thought it would be more significant considering that they didn't have to fuck with the Wii there's no Wii U version of this whereas yeah. Breath of the Wild they kind of had to I, I thought they were hamstrung enough a, a little bit by the Wii U and so I thought that this would have more of a visual gap in terms of, hey, we're just making this for the Switch so we can go balls to the wall on this hardware. But it seems like not entirely. I mean, may- maybe there are some like under the hood stuff, improvements that they made, but I thought I thought it would look a little more noticeably better, but kind of looks exactly the same in terms of like texture quality and performance. Yeah, it's not until you get to the under the hood stuff when you start seeing, like you said, like the draw distance. The yeah, I noticed the frame rate's like a bit more stable here. I haven't found any like Korok Village yet, though. So I'm sure like that'll be yeah. the ultimate test to get to that Korok Village. What that runs like? Yeah, because uh, if you remember Breath of the Wild, that ran like shit. It ran yeah. like sub twenty when you got there. Um, so that'll be the ultimate test to see like how much of an improvement it is. But already, like you're right, I'm seeing draw distance is better. Um item scaling like resolution scaling looks a lot sharper now when like things are farther away the resolution dips but it's not like as obnoxious as it was in the first game to see like the resolution dip for far away things um but yeah the, your the texture quality like looks the same but everything else under the hood just runs better but you're right like i'm looking at 4k 60 fps like footage right now on youtube and it's like even with the youtube compression it yeah. already looks better than like the native game. Yeah. So like it's I, I cannot wait for a Switch Pro. If a Switch Pro comes out in the next like year, I would buy it for it to, to see the improvements it makes to this game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's this game's fucking incredible, dude. Like this, there's so much here to do. There's so much to play with and 
the way the game lets you solve your problems is just it's it's incredible there's this uh part i i notice and you'll you'll notice it so minor spoiler i guess but not really but in a dungeon i was doing there was a, a hidden chest and it was behind like a mesh gate but there's like, a little hole in the gate and he thought like oh i could use my ultra hand to like go to the hole grab the chest no it's too far away it's like what do i do I used icicles to make a stick <laughs> to poke through the hole <laughs> to attach to the chest to pull the chest out. <laughs> That's I didn't like, even know you could do that. What, like yeah. wait, if you attack through the gate, you can like poke the no, attach, attach, attach. Oh, so I used an ultra hand to grab. Uh, so I had to do it one at a time. I grabbed an icicle and maneuvered it through the hole in the gate attaches to the chest now when you attach it you drop the item from your ultra hand it drops it on the floor oh. attached to each other so i would do that and i would grab another icicle attached to the end of that icicle and i just kept doing that until i could reach it and then i would just grab it from the end of the icicle chain and then pull it out through the through the hole that's uh that sounds unintended but <laughs> yeah well i did it yeah so, yeah that's the beauty that's the of it part of this game, dude like I am I'm butthurt about something. I just had a, a memory like from a long time ago. I, I liked the, I played Trine Two like I, ten years ago on Wii U. Maybe not not ten years, but a long time ago on Wii U. And one of the reviews gave for the game was like, you can solve a lot of puzzles in a way that feels unintentional. And they said like it was a bad thing. Yeah. And I was like, no, oh, that sounds awesome. Like to let you solve puzzles the way you want to. Even if the developer didn't intend you to do it, you still solved it. Who gives a fuck? And now everyone's praising that same reviewer, IGN, is re is praising Tears of the Kingdom for the same thing. Oh, that was. <laughs> and like, and I'm like, I'm pissed off about it. They got points off from one game, but this game, it's like, oh, it's a selling point that you can like solve puzzles in a way outside the, the way the developer intended. It's a selling point for this, but a detriment to another game. Yeah. Um, but I think that's great. Like that should be the point of games, right? Just to play them, like play them, have fun, explore. Yeah. And. Play That's why game. one one of the one of the other things I wish this game did was some a lot of more recent games have just added in like accessibility options that just allow you just they're basically like cheat codes that you could just turn on from the menu like um uh Forspoken was like the last game that I saw that had just you open the options menu and you can just be like yeah uh just make me invincible give me infinite whatever the fuck and j you can just enable shit that just breaks the game or just lets you play however the fuck you want I wish that this game had some shit that you could just turn on and get and just be like yeah, just give me infinite stamina give me infinite like ultra energy just give me infinite everything so I can just do whatever the fuck I want uh like i wish just had stuff like that you could just build whatever the fuck you want just build crazy shit and just have fun or at least like a creator mode that yeah, like, yeah. gives you infinite everything but it unlocks story progression so you can't progress the story like I, i'd be okay with that yeah if like if nintendo wants you to, like play the story their way i get it but like let me fuck around with shit like however i want to um and I see what you mean. Like Minecraft has a creator mode, so this definitely should too. But we'll probably never get it. Um, yeah. But yeah, this game is fucking great, dude. Like I could talk about this game all day. Like, and yeah, it's, not, it's not a perfect game. Like again, the, the controls are very like tricky to get into. Yeah. They're not intuitive. Um, the X button is a jump button. The top button is your jump button. So <laughs> there's a there's an option specifically that swaps. Uh the the x and a button it's it's uh the, wait no on nintendo it's the b button there's an, there's an option in the menu that specifically hey you want to swap these two buttons like just those but that, that's as far as it goes though yeah so yeah there's not like a full like keep key remapping as much as i wish there was yeah but um, they it's like they knew that they fucked up with that like i don't know why they chose to even do it that way when they're just gonna have the, have the option like hey you want to just swap these two buttons like why even do it then just make it normal because breath of the wild had it so they're like oh we gotta keep it the same for those like breath of the wild fans i've done like a thousand hours into breath of the wild and yeah yeah like oh god this game is just so good dude oh my god this is this game's fucking incredible like this game is 
if you own a Switch, you don't have Breath of the Wild. What the fuck are you doing? But if you own a Switch, you don't have yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. Fucking throw your Switch away because you you are you're obviously not using it. So well, that's it the thing. There's people that just don't. There's people that don't like what this these games are. They don't like the open nature of it. They definitely don't like shit breaking. They don't like. Like they they come in expecting a certain thing when you put that Zelda name on on the thing. The the, the Breath of the Wild is a is a game that I, I always mention together with. Metal Gear Solid 5 in terms of what they do for the franchise because yeah. I feel like they're, those two games are one and the same and yeah. it, the only... a lot of things that argue for the better but long time fans might not like yeah and the only problem with Metal Gear Solid 5 is we're never going to see them improve on that game whereas yeah. Tears of the Kingdom is like the ultimate version of this uh, form of Zelda, I think. The ultra version form of Zelda so far. <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, you you think they're gonna do another one? Of I don't think they can do another one of know. these, man. I don't know, man. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Like, we'll see. Like, we'll see what happens. I don't think they can do another one unless it's completely different. <laughs> uh, unless it's like a Majora's Mask type shit. Where it's just like, yeah, different, new, new field, new everything. And oh yeah, the moon's we'll see coming what down. Happens, man. We'll see what happens, man. Like I don't know what. I would have never thought like if you told me make a game, and I could use a game as a blueprint, like Breath of the Wild. You told me make a new game with this. I would have, I would have never thought of like the fusion mechanic to include that. I would have never thought of like the ultra hand mechanic to include that. Like that's like such a creative way to like expand on uh gameplay uh possibilities yeah that i know i would have never thought of so it could be possible that nintendo's got the creative minds behind nintendo could be thinking of something else and think of a whole direction i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen but we'll see like but whatever they put out that's like if it's like wild related you know like another like wild type Zelda game, I'm going to pay attention to it. I think you go full fucking, you go full Skyrim with it. Just like, yeah. <laughs> like, cause this is already, this is already the closest thing to an Elder Scrolls. Cause the thing I, I like about, uh, Elder Scrolls game, or like just Bethesda games in general, like Elder Scrolls and Fallout, was that no one fucking, no one ever attempts to try to make one of those games. Yeah. That's why I kind of forgive them when it, like, their shit's a little buggy and glitchy or whatever the fuck. It's just because they're making games that no one else even fucking attempts to make. So yeah. I think Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom is like the closest to that, where it's just like the whole world is open. And you can just fuck with everything, even like the fucking apples on the kitchen table. You can just pick up and fuck with. Um, all the NPCs are just out there doing shit. Like this is the closest to that that anyone. What I like about this game that it does better than like those games is that with Fallout, you know, with us the RPGs, they're RPGs, right? Like at the end of the day, like the fun is seeing numbers go up yeah but with this there's no numbers to go up it's all gameplay like yeah you can't go out and grind your level up to like get the challenge you yeah. know like it's you gotta learn how to play the game with the tools provided and get creative with it and it's it's fun it's fun when you do that like it's fun to do like it's fun to explore and find new items with with with, with fallout and Skyrim, the fun is exploring. The fun's exploring, discovering new things, finding new things, but also like that little level up, you know, when you when you when you get enough XP. But with this, it's like, oh, here's a new plant that grants this effect. What could I do with it? Or oh, here's like, here's like a thing I could use with my ultra hands. Like how how could I how could I incorporate this into like my problem solving like repertoire, like. It's oh god, I, I, it's it's very off the cuff what I'm trying to say here, but it's 
this triggers so many like good things in my brain that while still having a world big enough to rival like those Bethesda RPGs, like you said, like here's like characters have like schedules, they go out and do stuff, they have their own like sense of urgency for their day to day. And that changes depending on what you've accomplished. Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but once you like solve a, a dungeon, it changes the locale a little bit. So the NPCs react to that change. Like it's, I mean, you saw that in Breath of the Wild, right? Like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. the Zora Kingdom was like under heavy rainfall and lightning storms. And the NPCs all gathered around in the city. And then once you clear it up, like the, then you find them like walking around the road, like doing no commerce is happening now because you opened up those roadways. Like, oh my God, it's just. Yeah. And that's I'm something like even, giddy. that's something even it. like a, like an Elder Scrolls doesn't do very well is like make you feel yeah. like you had an impact on the, on the world. Um, Cause that was that was one of the first things I noticed about Tears of the Kingdom is like the the shop lady you talk to, in the in that first like encampment. There's a lady that like runs the shop and she's like a Gerudo lady. She's like, yeah, man, I I came I made the you know I came all the way down here and uh, my my hometown is kind of kind of fucked up right now. And she like mentions it and that, and it happens to be one of the towns that has one of the the um, depths things that's you know under oh, yeah, yeah, turmoil yeah. so i was like oh i'm gonna go down there first since she mentioned it i'm gonna like go down there and check out her like hometown area and like talk to her family or whatever and uh i actually didn't make i fucked around too much and actually didn't make it down there but it was yeah. one of the things where i was like it was in the back of my mind like oh shit i can go down there because that's one of the places that she mentioned and that's that's never been one of the feelings i got from uh like in Elder Scrolls is like, yeah, there's like no real, I, I don't really feel connected to this world uh, in the same way that like from the, from the gate, I feel connected to, to this one. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel too. Like I feel connected to the world and I feel like, I feel like not just a part of the world, but like a living part of this, like massive organism that has a bunch of moving parts, but also like in a, a huge piece in it too because like i said you could like do stuff that impacts the world and stuff happens like i said like no spoilers here but in breath of the wild like again that town's under heavy rainfall and heavy lightning storms so everyone's gathered up in the town once you save it you clear up those lightning storms now suddenly people can like walk around and you find those those shopkeepers like in the world after that and yeah the the, the market opens up a little bit more because now they can leave and get more supplies like it's it's so expansive and i'm like how the fuck did nintendo do this on the switch like i'm i'm blown away with how big this game is again if it was released on literally anything else it would be better like there's no doubt there's no debate there we've seen it but the fact that nintendo is make is taking these chances and creating something very unique and fun to play while still uh crazy familiar you know because it doesn't do anything like totally new right like it does open world stuff like skyrim does it does um vehicle customization not as good as banjo kazooie nuts and bolts or like minecraft like you said um but it does a lot of these things in such a unique way that you get a whole new experience out of it doesn't that doesn't feel derivative from other games you played you know what i mean yeah like like when games try to do this, like, oh, it's this game and this game together. Like, Darksiders is a great example. Like, I like Darksiders because people sold it to me. Like, oh, it's like Devil May Cry mixed with God of War mixed with Legend of Zelda. And I was like, great, let's play. And it, it, it does all those things, but it doesn't do it as well as those individual games do. But this game, it's got an open world like Skyrim. It's got, you know, crafting and stuff like Minecraft. It's got, it lets you make like contraptions like Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Does it do it as well as those things? It's debatable, but the experience it brings together by having those things combined is unlike anything I've played before. And it's yeah, god damn it, it's even, such a great game. Even like the Zelda franchise itself, is which has become like so formulaic, it's nice to see that this is kind of just 
it's still breaking shit up a little bit in terms of what you expect from a fucking Zelda game. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This game is great, and I don't know how much more I can say about it without like spoiling too many things. Because <laughs> yeah, it's got me worried about speaking of, of Bethesda. It's got me worried about Starfield. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I don't know if Starfield is gonna. It, I, I mean, we haven't seen any much about it yet, but I'm I, the stuff that we know about it already. I'm like, it's got load screens and shit. I'm like, this doesn't, you know, unless you go into a shrine. The that's the load, only time. Yeah, the only load screen is when you go into a shrine or if you fast travel somewhere. Like, yeah. that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm curious about Starfield. So, it's same, like, especially when, like, ah. Uh, Especially when Nintendo is able to do this on quote unquote inferior hardware, not quote unquote, it is inferior hardware. Let's be honest here. Yeah. Um, and Starfield had all this time, all this money. Starfield was announced before Breath of the Wild was, I think. So, and so yeah. definitely before Fish the Kingdom. And yeah. to see like what that's going to be, especially with like Microsoft's track record recently, dude, like. And they had one game that released that was that well that worked day one like at all <laughs> like this it's, last year at least it's so. been like there's smaller like indie or stuff like pentiment and uh you know i guess maybe grounded but that's been like an early access so they've had time to just build that out yeah so we'll see man if starfield I was super excited for Starfield until Tears of the Kingdom came out because now I'm like, oh, I don't know what else is the developers going to do. Like, <laughs> I know we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But Tears of the Kingdom is a fucking phenomenal game. And I fucking love this game. And I cannot wait to see, like, I can't wait to play more of it. I can't wait to see what expansions we get for it. I want a Master Cycle already, goddammit. Like, give me the Master Cycle <laughs> DLC. Um, this game would be perfect for it. Let's be honest here. A master yeah. I could strap shit onto. Oh my god! Build your own master cycle. Yeah, or give me a ma- a pre-made master cycle, but let me put shit onto it. Let me strap like flamethrowers to it, a wings. Oh, yeah. You know, if they just poured the master cycle from the Breath of Wild DLC to this game, but let you like attach shit to it, that'd be fine. That'd be fine for me. Like, I'd be I'd be happy with that. <laughs> But we'll see what happens, man. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about more of this. Here's the key news. I'm going to talk about this all day, and I'm going to spoil some shit if I talk anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so you watched the Mario movie. How was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, that Mario movie is out on uh, streaming now, I guess. Yeah. And, yeah, I watched it. And yeah. it's... Yeah. um. It's it's better than you would expect for, uh, I guess like I guess the kind of material that exists in the Mario universe, which yeah. is an expanded universe, I suppose, because yeah. the Donkey, Donkey Kong's, Kong's yeah, yeah Donkey Kong's in it, and which I guess we knew, but I guess I didn't really think about it until you see it in the movie, and it's like oh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's whole, not just Donkey Kong, like Diddy's in it, Dixie's in it, uh, I think like Funky Kong's in it, like all the Kongs are in it, there's a whole Kong yeah. world that exists alongside the Mushroom Kingdom, they're like, oh, we're gonna recruit the Kong army, and you're like, the Kong army, like, I, when you see, when you think about it, you think, oh, it's just like Donkey Kong, but no, it's a whole Kong universe that's there, that exists alongside the kong, the yeah. Kingdom, yeah the kong kingdom so i'm like oh they're gonna fucking do like a mario universe here like cinematic universe where because they make the the, the whole movie's rotten with fucking nintendo references yeah there's like a um mario's like bedroom has a bunch of shit in it it's like he's playing an nes he's playing uh he's playing Kid Icarus? Kid Icarus. Oh, that's cool. 
playing Kid Icarus on top of his TV. He has a uh, R wing from Star Fox, um, and he has posters like strewn about that have like it's like he has Karate Champ and uh, all kinds of references and shit. Yeah, they're just, they're just making references to like everything. Like, anything's possible in this fucking thing. What I'm That's expecting, cool. to, what I'm uh, immediately what I thought about was like, oh, they're gonna do like an F Zero movie, or they could do like a Zelda movie. Just anything's on the table now with this. I would watch the fuck out of an F Zero movie, dude. Or like <laughs> Smash Brothers, like now, like Smash Brothers is like canon at this point because fucking they can do anything. Yeah. Uh, so that was the my immediate thought after like seeing this stuff I was like, oh shit. But it's like a, it's a good movie. It's like funny at times. Uh, again, just references out the ass, um, and it's like it's really good. So yeah, uh, the soundtrack is garbage though. The soundtrack oh, is yeah. like a bunch of '80s fucking. You know, name any hit song from the '80s. It's probably in this movie. Uh, <laughs> And it's like you guys like could couldn't have like what I wanted is this for them to do like original or like maybe like remixes of Mario music, which they do have like they do do that, but it's like more like eighties hits than you would expect. And I'm like, this is kind of shitty, but kind of shitty, yeah. especially since like you know Nintendo like. Yeah, you have no, they give Nintendo's composers. They like, give credit yeah. to Koji Kondo, like he's in the movie, I guess, making music, but it's like only for like small segments, and you're like, oh, they should have just taken this theme and then just completely just went to town with it, uh, but they don't do that, and it sucks. But um, That's yeah, bummer. it's okay. I'll check it out. It's on streaming. Is it like? Is it like um, on demand? Like, got to pay to rent it, or is it like streaming on a platform? Um, I think you pay to rent it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, they got them in. They got it in. It's in like 4K and shit. Dolby, uh, HDR. It's got the works. I'll check it out. I'll check it out for sure. There's uh, compared to like the the Sonic movie. What do you think? The Sonic movie's better. It's better. Yeah. It's a better movie, just in terms of, first of all, uh, Jim Carrey is just un- unbeatable. You get Jim Carrey, and your, your movie's golden. But um, I, I think they're both like pretty well-paced movies. Like The Mario movie's like an hour and a half, and it just kind of goes. I don't like what they do with Peach, in the Mario movie, like they make her the kind of the star of the movie, uh, which is kind of not Mario in terms of you know, uh, Peach gets a lot of screen time, gets a lot of voice work attributed to her, which I'm not, I was not a fan of, but which like I thought it was kind of weird too to see that because. Yeah, I know they're trying to get away from like the damsel, damsel in distress thing, but hear me out. That <laughs> same like personality shift, you know, have someone who's like more engaged, more, uh, you know, a princess that's more engaged, more um, talkative, more agency in herself. Yeah, but put that apply that to Zelda, the Zelda movie. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they have to be. It had that they have to be doing a Zelda movie at soon, because yeah. uh, because when you know Miyamoto is involved in this fucking movie, so I'm like I'm I'm thinking of Miyamoto IPs that he can then blend his shit on. So that's like Zelda, that's Star Fox, that's uh, what what else is Miyamoto? Pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, like yeah, it's and, like Zelda, Star Fox, Pikmin, Mario. God, I'm trying to think of something. He did a bunch of Nintendo shit. Yeah, he didn't do Metroid, did he? That might 
That might be him. That might be him. I don't think so. I'm not sure. But he can he can do it. He could do it. I mean, oh, anyone Kirby. could do it. No, he didn't do Kirby. He didn't do Kirby. He did uh hold on. So Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda, F Zero, Star Fox, Pikmin, and Ten Dogs. Those are the ones he's worked on. Okay. He was like directly responsible for. It. Yeah, and like all of all of that stuff kind of makes a cameo in the Mario movie. Except except for like there's nothing Zelda in it. There's zero Zelda in it. It's gonna be a Zelda movie next. Watch. That's yeah. why they want to make a reference to it because like that's gonna be a movie, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm expecting though. Is just Mario Cinematic Universe or Nintendo Cinematic Universe leading into like a smash brothers movie <laughs> I'm okay with is that. what i'm thinking yeah I'm with that. yeah yeah uh, we got some trailers everybody um mortal kombat one <laughs> official announcement trailer. yeah which is this is like what the second time third time mortal kombat's been rebooted like because the first one was uh, mortal kombat 9 right that was like the first reboot yeah and that took place like after the ending of armageddon where like raiden like sent like mess to his past self to like change things just fuck things up even more so that like retold like mortal kombat one through three i think and then the next couple games just were built off of that and then with mortal kombat 11 with aftermath that like retconned everything where Liu Kang was like the new elder god. And I guess this is like a new reboot of like that universe with like Liu Kang taking over as right in Raiden's place. I don't know. I'm out of the loop when it comes to Mortal Kombat lore, so I have no idea. I followed it like quite a bit. Okay. So like yeah. That that's the summary. I mean, it's just it's a, it's a, it's a trailer, so it doesn't show off like any gameplay. It's just like, um, I would stuff. imagine some of this might be in engine. I would imagine, I would imagine the game just looks this good, so it kind of blurs yeah. the line between in engine and cinematic shit. But once once people start dying, which and this is very gory, and I love yeah. it. Uh, once you start seeing that, I think most of that might be in engine, like that might be just straight up like gameplay, like fatalities or something. But, um, we'll see when it happens. But, like, Mortal Kombat 11, I think I talked about it when I first started playing. I played it like a year later when like it was on sale, and the, the aftermath expansion was like you could basically get the whole game with like the aftermath stuff for like cheap. And I was a little disappointed with it after playing it. Like, I felt Mortal Kombat X was a better playing game. Um, this game felt really stiff, very clunky. Um, competitively, it's not the best to get into because it had this weird system. Where you can choose, like, you can mix and match your equipment, and you can mix and match and customize your, like, special abilities, too. So it's, yeah, it was just, it, was, it wasn't that fun to play at least in my opinion it wasn't like world combat x i think was the better was the better playing game and 11 took a lot of things from injustice but like none of the good things so i'll probably <laughs> the thing, i might have to wait on this game the thing about the this game. is that i'm at this point i'm expecting more from a fighting game after after seeing what we get with uh street fighter i'm like I need, oh, yeah. I need more. You got to give me like, you got to give me like a Shaolin monks. <laughs> you got to give me, you got to give me something with this, man. I can't just have yeah. another straight up Mortal Kombat. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll find out with this. They haven't said much. Maybe Kiefer Sutherland is in this one. <laughs> Maybe we'll see when they announce more of it, but yeah. What, what Street Fighter six is doing, do with a single player campaign. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll see what uh Netherrealm's doing with Mortal Kombat because like you said, like the traditional like 
I'll watch a cut scene, do a fight, like story mode isn't like gonna cut it anymore. Yeah. Because I don't think it is. For single player content at least. But we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens for sure. Um, but I'll I'll wait till like some gameplay comes out before I start saying shit. Um, Lords of the Fallen got an official gameplay trailer, not to be confused with uh what is it? Lord of the Fallen. And Lord of the Fallen is like a reboot of that franchise. Um, which Lord of the Fallen, Lord of the Fallen is even that old a game, but whatever. Um, yeah, to be getting a reboot. I, I don't looks, even know if this is a reboot. Yeah. I think it's just a sequel. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I never played any of those fucking games. Like I played the, I played it a little bit. It was dope, in that you know, it was kind of like I mean, it was like a Dark Souls, you know, which ain't nothing wrong with that. This yeah. still looks like a Dark Souls, but yeah, Lord of the Fallen was like one of the first like Dark Souls clones to come out to get like major attention. Yeah. And this is like yeah, right, this is more of that. By the way, it takes like a minute and a half to like actually get to gameplay in this gameplay trailer. So. <laughs> yeah. It looks a little bit faster, though. It looks a little bit faster, a little bit snappier. So we'll we'll see when it comes out, but uh, I'm not a big fan of like these Souls like games, so we'll see when it drops. Yeah. Um, uh, our style is really cool. Yeah, our style's cool. That I do like. But um Yeah, I don't know seems seems it seems like it's doing it more of like a bloodborne type thing also like it's got like a little berserk uh like this thing with like the hand and the uh well dark souls always had like that berserk influence but yeah i know what you yeah. mean so we'll see when this uh when this drops man with the review set um next trailer we got is dead by daylight it's got a nicholas cage teaser so that's a thing yeah um dead by day like they're adding they haven't said anything yet only nicholas cage so you don't know if he's a you don't know if he's a monster or or uh or one of the survivors but yeah. you know the thing about nick cage is it could be he could be both he could be both can like convincingly up to breath of the bait but he can definitely do both yeah <laughs> well that's the thing he just comes oh, out uh, as that new movie he's got coming out renfield looks really good i really want to see that but... yeah but yeah, he's, he, he has a monologue and he comes out and he comes out as nicholas cage not as like any of his characters so yeah i you don't know what to expect with this which is interesting yeah, and it says learn more on July 5th. So come July 5th, we'll have some more information on it. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Cage is like, he's got a bad rep. He's like, he, he's a fun actor. And I feel like the, the National Treasure movies kind of fuck with this image a bit. Because, like, if you describe Nicholas Cage in, let's say, three words or one word, what's the first word that comes to mind? Uh... Like, There's some words that come to mind like cheesy yeah cheesy eccentric maybe overacting right <laughs> yeah or the word boring ever come to your mind <laughs> not with him no yeah that's what i'm saying I've, I've asked multiple people that question and i've gotten boring more than once <laughs> and the, the the connecting tissue is that oh have you seen the national treasure movies he's so boring in those those are good but, movies man that's what everyone said. That's well, I only, saw the, I only saw the first one. I've never seen any of them, but uh, everyone I've asked is like, told me he's like super boring in those movies. I'm like, those are the only Nicolas Cage movies you've seen? Because like, cheesy, absolutely. You know, hammy, absolutely. Overacting, yeah, eccentric, crazy, all words I would use. But boring is definitely not a word I would use to describe Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll see what happens with Dead by Daylight game, dude. They're gonna announce more. Uh, what did I say? July seventh or July fifth? July fifth, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll see some more of that. Um, I'm gonna have you take over for a little bit to do game out game releases because I gotta take a dump. So all right. <laughs> yeah, we oh. do the show live, everybody. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go poop. I'm gonna have you take over. I'll be right back. All right. You ever like use a public restroom and uh, the toilet's all fucked up 
you know, like, how did this even happen? I, I try not to use public restrooms too much um, if I can avoid it. I mean, I've got incredible anal control, so I usually never have to. But, you know, there's times where there's times where you just got a man. You walk in that you walk in that shitter and there's just like there's just a catastrophe in front of you. And you're like, how did this even happen, man? Like what? Like what's you know, there's like shit under the fucking seat. And you're like, what? Like what's what are the physics involved in this? Um, to the point where you're like you're looking for the guy because because you're like, whoever did this couldn't have escaped this situation unscathed. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoever did this has to have evidence all over them. Because that's how bad it is. You're, like, looking for the guy that did this. Like, what the fuck is going on? Anyway, that was a little tangent. I, that's not... That's not... <laughs> that's not at all what I wanted to talk about. But it's just, that crossed my mind when uh, he said he had to take a shit. And I was like, yeah... Sometimes, sometimes you just find disasters in these fucking toilets. And you're like, how does this? What are the physics of your asshole that you get shit under the seat? Sometimes you find shit like on the front, like where your dick goes. And you're like, how the fuck do you get shit on the on the lip of the toilet? Like, what? Is, how do you even do that? I don't understand. Uh, I've got in my where I work, we've got we've got our own private restrooms where I work. And sometimes you walk in there and some, it's like daily sometimes too, like daily shit fuck ups in the, in the, in our, in our private toilet and our work toilet. Like someone I work with is in here fucking this toilet up. And I'm like, dude, what is wrong with your asshole that you got shit on the front of the seat? You got shit on the bottom of the, on the bottom of the, of the, seat of the toilet you got shit i'm like dude like there's no way like does your shit like does your like anus like come out like the neck of a like et does it just like come out and like try to find somewhere to nest and it's like searching for a spot and it's like oh this is a good spot right here on the bottom of this fucking seat I just don't understand. When I take a shit, it goes straight down, dude. It's straight down. Not once have I had shit on the bottom of the of the lip of the seat. I don't understand. Not once. That sometimes, sometimes, like I not not. I've never wanted to put a camera in a fucking toilet so bad. Then when I see that shit, and I'm like, I just have to. I'm just curious to see how this happened. That's all. There's nothing sexual about it. You know, nothing sexual. I just want to like know how the fuck, how the fuck is this happening? Like, what is involved? What are the physics here? Are there even physics? Are you breaking the laws of physics to to for this to have happened with your asshole? Is your asshole just designed in a certain way that uh <clears throat> that you get shit? Video games, guys. We got After Us coming out. This I've 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 seen this game somewhere. Uh in some trailers. Seamless transition, by the way. <laughs> After Us is coming out on Tuesday, May twenty third for PC, PS five, Series X. I've seen a little bit of this game somewhere. But I don't know where. Maybe I played this. No, I didn't play this. But it looks like one of those like walking sims where it's like, hey, the earth is in turmoil and you're like the sprite that's trying to rescue it almost. Um, seems like one of those games that has like a bigger message about uh, the conservation of our planet, fossil fuels and shit like that. So looks interesting uh what else is coming out convergence a league of legends story i hear these games are pretty good why well, I, I think this is either the second or third one of these i think this is the third one of these it's a different type of game every time too like i think the first one was like a turn-based strategy rpg 
And this one looks like a fucking... This one looks like a Metroidvania almost. Or is it a 2D platformer? This one actually looks fucking dope. Uh, Echo, you're Echo, a young inventor with a device to manipulate time. I see some gameplay here. Yeah. Okay, come on now. Oh, here we go. A little bit of gameplay. This is a guy, this is the cover guy for the fucking, um, the fighting game, isn't he? I'm back. What I, what I miss? Oh, um, I was mostly telling shit stories, but, um, now we're talking <laughs> about video games. Okay. Um, mostly just, you know, it's how you go good. into a public restroom and it's just a catastrophe. And you're like, how did oh, someone yeah. like walk away from this unscathed? But um, we don't have to. We don't have to go back to that. Yeah, I'll watch on the on the rewatch. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a rant about fucking people just fucking shit up in the in the in the bathroom. And just fucking shit up for everybody. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, other people use this bathroom. It's public, and you're gonna fuck it yeah. up. Fuck yeah, me. yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I can get like a public public restroom, but I we got a private restroom where I work, so it's just pe the people I work with that use this toilet. And even then, even then, people don't have the consideration of, uh, or maybe they just don't have control over it. Maybe it's just their asshole is just so explosive and uncontrollable. That they're get, just getting shit all over the place, and it's just I don't I just don't understand how it happens. So, uh, you know, even on the front of the lip, and you're like, how the fuck you get shit on the lip? Like, what are you like you're using like a squatty pot? Like, what are you like putting your legs behind your head when you shit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe the angle. Maybe it's like they don't get, maybe they don't wipe right and then like they just slide off of it and like. Oh, you think they're it. like flicking the shit? I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think it was like a post shit catastrophe. I thought it was like during the shit that this was happening. Like it was like coming out of their asshole like that. Like it was so explosive that uh, it just exploded out of their ass into this like painting where it's like one of those like paintings where it's just like you flick the the brush at the canvas and you just end up with shit like that's why some people who are like the panel that's way like i'm a bigger dude so sometimes like if the toilet's like really small or if like, the toilet space is really small i have to like kind of lean over and hover like wipe before i, I can't like sit and wipe i gotta like oh. hover over a little bit i never made a mess doing it but i'm sure someone less coordinated than me could <laughs> Yeah, I guess I could see that. But you would have to have some, like, very wet... You would have to be flicking with the intensity of, like... You know, like, with the purpose of, like, I'm gonna flick this shit out of my ass. I don't know. Maybe there's, like, like wiping back to front, like, aggressively, and it's, like, spilling. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I'm, like, I'm, I'm putting more thought into this than I should be. But well, when you see it, when you see it, it, it elicits... The, that kind of thought though is when you see it it's like yeah. how the fuck you, you're pondering all the possibilities it's like, like yeah. you're flicking like like Hannibal Burris and pickle juice just like <laughs> <laughs> just like flicking <laughs> do you like that you like that reference uh, yeah it's, I get that one yeah I, I knew you've seen that special so that's why I had to bring it up but, yeah um, not the special at least not that bit but yeah, I don't know. People are weird, man. Everyone shits differently. I think some people just don't know how to shit, and like, I'm sure there are some people like every time I shit, it makes a mess on the toilet lid. I don't know why, and you find out they're like wiping a weird way or something. Yeah, well, the wiping wasn't. I didn't consider that until you said it. I thought it was just like they had just the dynamics of their asshole was built different. But um, <laughs> it could be that too. It could be a lot of things. Yeah, but the the flick is that could be it's just you guys be flicking with so much intensity i don't know i don't know man it's like almost like you had like an egg scrambler and you're like shoving up their ass and it's just flying all over the place i'm but, sure if you want to hear some funny shit stories my uh my brother-in-law uh he's been on the show a couple times knuckle knuckle pucker he's yeah. like he's comments a couple times i'm sure he has some funny shit stories he works in a 
He works at a janitorial service, so I'm sure he's seen some shit. Oh, yeah. 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 I never asked him, but I should. Like, next time he's, like, next time he's commenting, we'll ask him some, like, funny shit stories, some shit he had to clean up. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to know. I said I, I wanted to put a camera in the toilet, not for anything sexual, just to find out how the fuck it happens. Yeah, just for what's science, going on like, in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's the trip. <laughs> but yeah, games though. Convergence. Yeah, looks good. Moving looks, on. Looks fun, yeah. I was watching oh, it looks good. Next glitch buster stuck on you. What is this? I've never heard of this game before. What is this? It's crazy that games are coming out and uh the only thing anyone could think about is fucking Zelda. It's like <laughs> The description here says it's an action looter shooter shoot 'em up. Okay. There's the looter shooter stuff. Oh, okay. I think I see it. I like the way this looks. It looks yeah, me too. not what you expect from a looter shooter. Uh, what is this? They're like this... stacking on top of each other. I'm like, what is this game? I'm the. I want to put this in the wish list just because it fucking. It says it's a, it's a co-op. It's a four-player co-op third-person shooter. Interesting. Very interesting. It almost looks like uh, Splatoon's uh, um, clam mode. Almost. This is this is a trip. Okay, I think I'm into this. Is it like a PVE game? It looks like a PVE game. Yeah. But then it has like side scrolling sections too, like this. Yeah, this is weird. This looks like a lot the of fun. Second trailer, the second trailer has, shows off a little bit more gameplay. There's like some vehicle stuff too. Like, what is going on here? See, these are the kind of games that you you put you put Zelda down for a second just because this looks so interesting. Yeah, this is definitely making me do a double take. Like, yeah, like it's like who made this toy? Well, like when you're driving down the road and you see something interesting, so you you kind of rubberneck a little bit. This game yeah. is making me rubberneck. Like, um, this is the only game that these guys have made, so. Play logic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's in the wish list. This yeah. looks like it could be fun. Yeah, it looks like it would be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm putting this in the wish list too. This looks cool. This looks really cool. Okay, I'm checking this out. Um, next, we got Monster Menu, the Scavenger's Cookbook. What is this? Oh, like a strategy game. Yeah, the strategy RPG. The Scavenger's Cookbook spices up the classic SRPG formula with deliciously fun cooking-based mechanics. <laughs> All right, like a dungeon crawler SRPG with cooking mechanics. Could be cool. Not my cup of tea. Interesting. Sure like yeah. Yeah. I guess it, it increases your uh, your combat abilities. Yeah. Like uh, this one gives you more HP, calories, hydration, happiness. Sorry, I'm looking at see these. <laughs> There's not a lot of info here, but it looks cool. Like it's almost it's it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's not my cup of tea, but it looks cool. Uh, next is uh, Planet of Lana. Lena? Lana. Yeah. Lana. Um, I played this in the demo derby. Oh, how was it? Well, I will say the opening hours are not very enticing. Yeah. <laughs> but you know they've they've uh, what they've shown in some of the trailers and the in the later stuff. It looks very fucking cool, and that's the stuff that. Yeah. Uh, you, you want to get to but like the opening like tutorial hours very slow very tutorial heavy um 
but uh yeah you know it's like it's just it's one of those games you know it's like a limbo but you've got a it's like a it's like limbo mixed with a boy and his blob Ooh, okay so where you got this thing that you can control and tell him okay wait here or go ahead and he can fit in the stuff that you can't so you can send him ahead and kind of have him trigger stuff to kill enemies for you um it's like that so slower paced than the limbo which is already has like kind of slow moments but um yeah it was cool but it kind of unsold me on parts of that game so i don't know we'll we'll see it's i think this is gonna be on game pass it's one of those xbox games so i will play it there well for sure i'll check it out uh next we got puzzle bobble every bubble another puzzle bobble game huh yeah love me some puzzle bobble man this was uh this was one of those games i played a lot of back in the uh good old days yeah it's pretty dope like puzzle bomb was fun I, i'm looking forward to this this might be pretty cool i don't know if it's good if it's 40 dollars cool but it could be cool 40 dollars eh? i mean you know could be worse yeah well what's really cool though is a warhammer bolt gun it's like a like a retro fps in like the warhammer universe I like how Warhammer is just, uh, you can just do whatever the fuck you want with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've never, like, done, I, I know nothing about the Warhammer, like, lore. But this game looks fun. <laughs> it looks really fun. This is a Warhammer boomer shooter. Yeah. That's going on the wish list. Yeah, it looks dope. <laughs> looks dope as hell. Yeah, I, I didn't expect it to look like, um, like a pixel game it's like it's it's like almost it's like half uh it's like half duke nukem and then half uh like modern almost yeah, yeah. like i uh, like proteus that other like yeah 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 it looks all like proteus and i'm okay with that i gotta play that game again i'm gonna install that game again that game was fun did that ever re release out of? I think it's out of early access now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this looks this looks awesome. This does look awesome. Who made this? Or Rock Digital. Okay, they've got they've got games under their belt. Uh, nothing I've ever heard of. And then okay. May 24th, we got Sunshine Shuffle releasing for PC and Switch. It's a card playing game with a bunch of cute little animal critters. Um, visual novel, visual novel card game and collectathon. Oh, you know what? That was the other thing about Zelda. Is that it's almost like a collectathon? It's almost <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we went back to Zelda, but that was one of the thoughts that I had about Zelda was that it's like it's like a um collectathon because there's like so many there's, there's a lot of like items that you can collect, but there's also like straight up items that are like currency that do that you just cash in for shit. Oh, yeah, um like the Korok seeds and then like there's the um the Zonai devices and then there's the um the shrine the light orbs uh there's like a bunch of shit that you also collect just to for like upgrades and shit uh rupees there's like a bunch of like currency items that you cash in that yeah. you get in various different ways which I thought was interesting from like a like almost like a like open world like Benjo Kazooie type shit where okay, I don't want to go back to talk about Zelda but I kind of do though but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that was one of the interesting things that I noticed about it anyway Sunshine Shuffle this looks dope 
I'm not really into card games. When I see cards, I kind of tune out. So it's like looking at some of the stuff here, it's like a card game, but it's also like got a narrative focus to it. Yeah. Almost like a uh, poker night. Years ago. Yeah, but there's more to it than that. Like the description says you can like decorate the ship that you're on. And in exchange, you don't get like executed by the mafia. Oh. And it's got this Animal Crossing like look to it because the characters are all like cutesy anthro animals. Yeah, it's it's got a lot of things going on here. I think there's there's more to the surface than like I expected. Um, it's got a ska soundtrack. Ooh. <laughs> ska is not something I associate with uh uh neo noir and heist crews and uh you know well, it's almost like that games. like animal crossing like like kind of bouncy like cutesy animal crossing look which i I could see work for ska so um oh, we'll see me... this looks interesting it's on the wish list okay okay all right what else what else we got here next we got welcome kokuri-san a short novel with asmr starring vtuber kuruni kokuri oh with the asmr voices players can enjoy a close situation with kuruni kokuri <laughs> what is this i'm gonna turn this up <laughs> hold on yeah. oh are they not yeah, I'm gonna give you a sample of the uh, ASMR. ASMR could be a lot of things. I'm not familiar with this character, so I'm not sure what her ASMR thing is. Did she just whisper? It um, seems like the second trailer is like a gameplay. Yeah. Well, the point of ASMR is that you could like close your eyes and like just experience it, right? But this is like this is in Japanese. So you got to read everything. Well, the the, the thing about Japanese. the thing about ASMR is that oh, there's no English whatsoever. I don't see any in the trailer. Uh, it says subtitles on the in English, so on the yeah. side. On the side, it says subtitles English. So, um. Yeah, I, I, the thing about ASMR is it could be like a lot of things in terms of like some people, you know, they do uh, unboxings with ASMR or uh, and it's just the sound of like box cutting and, you know, tape ripping and shit like that. So, but, you know, talking is like the basic one. Yeah, I don't know. ASMR is like a genre I've never got into. And yeah. The appeal. Good for you if that's your thing. Like, if that's your thing, hit us up, man. Like, let us know, like, what the deal is. There's also visual ASMR, which yeah. I don't even know how that works, but. Yeah, I don't know how that works either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. uh, May 25th, we got Bat Boy releasing on PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. Okay, what is this? Bat boy, I can already, I can already tell this is a, this is a wish list game right here. I can already tell. I don't need to see anything okay, else. Ninja Gaiden Mega Man. Yeah. I'm into this. Okay, yeah. It's got a demo now. I'm gonna download that demo. Yeah, I'm gonna update Steam after this and download that demo. It looks dope. And Cassette Beasts is dropping on console May 25th. Uh, yeah. Switch, Xbox One, and Series X. I haven't played it yet. It's been out on Game Pass PC for a while, but I haven't had my, my PC hooked up. I might... No, I'm not going to play it after this. I'm going to play Tears <laughs> of the Kingdom. Um, <laughs> this game's been out since, like, end of April. I had plenty of time to play it, but I've been so busy with the move. I feel bad because I was super excited for this game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bad I timing. Yeah, I've got to wait until I'm done with Zelda. Yeah, I'm done with Zelda. 
Um, got overwhelmingly positive on Steam, so we know that good. there's good. The consensus is positive on it. That's good. I really hope this game gets a lot of attention because, like, um, when I look up when before the game came out, I look up stuff on YouTube, you know, like gameplay trailers and like music from the game and stuff. It would be like a couple thousand, maybe three, four thousand views. So. I'm like, I really hope this game like gets a lot of attention because it's so unique and cool. Yeah. Okay, it's starting to jump up now. Wherever we are now, like that that first song we heard with the lyrics, the vocals. Yeah. Last time I checked it, it was like sub thousand views. Now it's at thirty three thousand. So. Okay. Okay. It's getting some attention. Yeah. My comments are the most recent comment on that video, though. So. <laughs> People are engaging. I, it's, you ever make like a fucking zinger of a comment and it just gets no fucking attention? That's had that happen a couple times. I've also made comments that were just like kind of innocuous and it's still getting attention like years later. There's a, there's a flat earth guy whose name is Mike Jones. And for no. some reason, for some reason, it popped up in my like recommended he was having a debate with someone and on 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 the video i commented back then globes didn't want him now he's hot globes all on him and i'm i'm like oh this is the greatest comment ever, anyone's ever made and it's got no no traction dude i was like no oh, gets it. There's nobody gets it. yeah That's yeah why. i was like this is the greatest comment ever and it's just a bummer that i wasted it on this I, fucking uh... I saw this comment like years ago. I can't remember what it was, but it was a long comment. This dude called this this guy like childish or something in a, an opinion he had. He's like, you're probably a dumb kid. You're a childish immature. And the kid goes on a rant explaining how like, it was very close to being some I am very smart material, but the kid's more self-aware to let it get to that. So it never gets to that point. But he talks about how like maturity and like intelligence that to do with each other. Like I'm a kid, yeah, I'm immature, yeah. But I'm also smart enough to tell you that and he gives this guy this like explanation of this like bacterial microbe. He's like, I'm smart enough to tell you that. I'm also <laughs> immature enough to tell you that you mean less to me. And he explains the microbe is. Is if I'm also immature enough to say that you mean less to me than a bacteria that gives me diarrhea. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! Like it was like seriously one of the best comments I've ever read. Like it was really funny, self-aware, and like I said, it, it, it had the potential to be like some R. I am very smart stuff. But he never lets it get to that. He's like really funny about the way he like presented it. And I was like, oh my God, this kid is hilarious. Like, That's great. <laughs> yeah. It was, I wish I could find that comment together. I have no idea what fucking video it was on. And it was seriously like one of the best things I've ever read. Like it had potential to be like copy pasta material. <laughs> That's, yeah. They, oh man. There was another, there was another like string of comments that I saw on the Game Grumps. It was like a Game Grumps video where there were two people just throwing insults at each other. And at the end, it was like, at the at the end, someone left another comment that was like, the fucking irony. Because, oh, I think I took a capture. I, I captured it, I think. Shit. Uh, no, I don't have it. Shit. But, yeah, it was like a string of comments that were like, they were throwing insults at each other. And it was like some random guy came in and was like the fucking irony <laughs> anyway cassette piece You're looks pretty good to to me. Yeah. yeah cassette piece looks great we talked about it a lot in the show like this has been like we talked about this game a lot in the show and it's a game we're super excited for and that we wanted to play for a while so go check it out um dino punk is <laughs> releasing on pc <laughs> It's a crafting visual novel management game with dinosaurs. You run a repair shop. <laughs> weird, weird, weird setup, but I, I I'm like into it. You get points for creativity. I like when they take animals and just put them in human situations. <laughs> and I like to yeah. turn a world into yeah, this is a this is a world of these animals. They do things like humans do, but it's these animals. Hold up. I should take over for a while. I got to my baby. I think he's crying. All right. 
Um, like there was that uh, bird dating sim where I guess that one it was is different because it was tongue in cheek in the way like it was fucking birds and it was just stupid. But uh, you know something like this where it's you know they take it a little bit at least a little bit more seriously. Um. Yeah, this looks cool. I'm not really into the visual novel thing. Maybe I should just pick one of these and just try them. I don't think I've ever done a visual novel. Uh, or I guess, I don't know. I guess Dog and Ronda uh, is kind of... Right back two seconds. Yeah. I guess Dog and Rampa is like visual novel-esque. That's probably the most visual novel that I've done. But... Um... I don't know. Maybe I should just pick one of these. Pick another one of these and just kind of just give it a shot. I'm going to do that Sonic the Hedgehog one. Okay. Let's move on. Let's see what else we got going on here. Kazuna AI. Touch the beat. Okay, now this is a VTuber that I am familiar with. Um, She's like the OG, man. She's like... She's been around forever. She's like the OG... Uh... Oh, it's a uh, it's a VR. It's like a uh, Beat Saber. I'll, I'll give them credit for for doing something different with. Oh no, it's like different shit. It's like a Beat Saber and oh, it's both VR and non VR. That's interesting. What is it with these uh these uh like, idle games? Back, right? What? <laughs> What does the kid think about uh, Japanese idols? Uh, he doesn't really have an opinion. Uh-huh. He, he has the same thing I do. He like some of them are cool, but he looks at them and he's like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this uh, Kizuna AI game. She's like the original VTuber. Oh yeah. Is um, and she's the first one I ever heard of. Um, not that I ever got into watching her shit. But yeah. she's the only one that I've at least watched a little bit of. Yeah. And um, I don't know what it is why these guys always get, like, a rhythm game. Like, what is it about these? Like, she doesn't do music at all. I mean, I guess she does a little bit. She sings a little bit. But um, I think rhythm game just the most popular type of game in Japan. Like, the way, like, everything's a first-person shooter RPG here. I think everything's, like, oh, true. a rhythm game over there. True. Yeah. But, you know, it's not like they ever make, like, a uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg shooter. <laughs> we got a Mark Wahlberg rhythm game, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, we did get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, Mark he was Marky Mark. Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess they did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this looks dope because it's got, it's like, it's like Beat Saber if you play it in VR. Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know, DJ Max if you play it in not VR, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, both good games. Yeah. Uh, next, we got that Lord of the Ring Gollum game coming out on like everything. I forgot that was happening. <laughs> yeah, everyone forgot about that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of ups- like, no one's talked about it for a while, so I, that, that probably tells us everything we need to know about that game. Uh, I don't think it's a full price game, though. I think it's it's 50 Fifty dollars, and the That's precious good. edition is sixty. We'll, um, we'll see when it comes out. People say it's from the the sticks guys, right? That's who made it. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't. I'm not totally sure what the game is. I thought it was like a stealth action game. That's what I thought. I guess it kind of is. That is what it looks like. That's that is exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Gollum looks fucking weird though. Like he's always like <laughs> weird, but like <laughs> looks freaky. Yeah. We'll see when it comes out. We'll say about. I'm sure the hardcore Lord of the Rings fans are gonna buy it. Um. Next, we got Maquette. It's a first-person recursive puzzle game. Kind of like uh, what was that game that uh? God, popular, semi-popular indie dev made. It was like a first, The Witness, is that it? 
The Witness. Kind of looks like that. But reviews are mixed, so probably less positive than that game. Um, <laughs> oh, well. Moving on. What's you going to say about it? Oh, well, I want to know what people, what the problem is. I'm going to scroll down to the comments here and see what... Uh, Super liminal. I think that's that's the one that this reminded me of more. Super liminal, where it's like it, oh, it it's... fucks with perspective a little. Oh yeah, the first comment that I'm seeing is I want to like this game really did in theory. It has a lot going for it. Blah blah blah. blah. It's glitchy. There's no V sync. You will be soft locked often. It crashes. The puzzles are unwieldy. Oof. Yeah. And so it's more technical than. It just yeah. being bad. Oh well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Next is Proto Droid Delta. Oh, what is this? Looks like Mega Man X in three D. Oh my god! Oh, I, I've seen this. This is my wish list already. What do I know about this? It looks familiar. I think I've heard about it too. This looks cool. Yeah. Okay, let's go on the wish list. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it looks like. It's like Mega Man X, but like third person platformer. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Shit. Okay, it looks awesome. And then last but not least, welcome Kukuri Sen. The game we talked about earlier is releasing on Switch. Let's go back to this like Proto Droid Delta, though. That looks dope. Yeah. Hey. That's just it. It looks like. Did this release on something else before? Because I feel like we talked. We... Oh, this is a humble games joint, but they have not sent me this. <laughs> it's coming out May twenty fifth, so we'll keep an eye out before it. it looks dope. Yeah. We'll check it out for sure. All right, and that's gonna do it for the show, everybody. Thank you, everybody, who came in to listen. I know this was uh, a little bit weird. Got the baby here. But I think he did pretty good today. He wasn't like too loud, was he? No, he was fine. Cool. That was a well, that was a well mannered baby. For the most part, he's like losing <laughs> his shit right now. But he's like fussing and like kicking. He started uh-huh. teething a little while ago, and he's got like a third tooth coming in now, and it's like nice. all of our problems now. <laughs> <laughs> that third tired. tooth. He's like, yeah, he's tired. He's rubbing his eyes. So I know he's tired, but. He's like, apparently babies can be like overtired where they're so tired it pisses them off and they're too mad to like fall asleep. <laughs> That's like a thing that can happen apparently. It's, it's your job to like sue them to sleep. That's funny. Yeah, that's a thing that could happen. I was like, what? They can't even sleep on their own? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, um, that's going to do it here yeah. for podcast. Uh, you can go to gameoverse.com. Yep. Gameoverse.com slash Twitch. Gameoverse.com slash Discord. YouTube. YouTube. Slash YouTube. Slash Discord. Slash slash radio. We've got a 24 7 gaming radio. That, yeah. Actually, no, it's not slash radio. It's radio.gameoverse. It has its own domain. It has its own domain. But um, you can go to that and just listen to gaming music. Um, uh, yeah, adding new stuff to that yeah. all the time. Yeah, so. And uh, yeah, go to Discord and chat with us. I might play some video games later, so. I might hop in and say hi, depending on how this kid's acting. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, my computer's set up, so I can do some more, like, some more stuff now that my computer's working. All right. So. Yeah, I'll do it, everybody. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming in. Be cool, be safe, be asking to each other, and we'll see you all next time. Yeah. Be settled. Okay, bud. <laughs>